This video is supported by Brilliant. Hey, welcome back, I'm Lai. On this channel, I've talked a lot about technology and business space companies. I've talked about national agencies like NASA, ESA, and Roscosmos. I've also talked about private companies like SpaceX and Rocket Lab. One entity I've refrained to talk about is ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, simply because it's really hard to pigeonhole ISRO. Yes, it is a traditional national agency, much like NASA of the United States, but it's also at the same time extremely cost conscious and result oriented like a startup. Its launch price is almost as competitive as SpaceX. So let's talk about it today. Where does ISRO really fit in and what makes it so special? First of all, it is not fair to compare ISRO with other space agencies because ISRO has never possessed the ambitions or the fundings like the other space agencies. NASA's budget each year is $18 billion, $7 billion for European Space Agency, $3 billion for the Chinese and the Russians, ISRO's budget each year is only $1.7 billion. Think about it. With $285 billion cash reserve, Apple could have funded ISRO with cash for 167 years. That is how little ISRO spends every year, and that is why comparing ISRO with NASA wouldn't be fair. However, this is not to say that ISRO has not achieved extraordinary results. It has. Two of the most successful launches of ISRO is the PSLV C-37 in 2017 and the Mangoyan in 2013. PSLV C-37 until this day holds the record for launching the most satellites in a single rocket and Mangoyan successfully helped ISRO to become the fourth country to orbit Mars, even before the Chinese. But none of the aforementioned achievements comes close to what ISRO has spent for both missions around $70 million each. This, I think, reflects the core philosophy of ISRO, which is to be ambitious, but at the same time, cost-effective. In the 1960s, the Soviet Union and the United States competed fiercely in the space industry, which eventually accelerated the collapse of the Soviet Union, and now the Chinese are catching up with the Americans. Not to compete with NASA this time, but the Chinese are not going to be anyone else's lackey either. Therefore, while other space agencies compete to make the most powerful rockets in the world, ISRO never seemed to care about that. Just look at the evolution of its rocket launchers. They're all humbly named satellite launch vehicles. Different variations indicated by the first letter represent different orbit. PSLV for polar synchronous orbit and GSLV for geosynchronous orbit. This is the first clue of how pragmatic ISRO is. The second clue is in its vehicle design. If you take a closer look at ISRO's rocket evolution, it looks almost like SpaceX. The only difference is that ISRO has a more stable financial support from the Indian government and SpaceX had none. But in terms of the approach to design launch vehicles, both organizations are very similar. SLV and ASLV was initiated in the 1980s and ASLV's capability is similar to that of Falcon 1. The three versions of PSLVs have similar capabilities comparing to early versions of Falcon 9 and the GSLV has capabilities somewhat catching on to Falcon 9 Block 5. None of them could be classified as a super heavy lift launch vehicle like Falcon Heavy and Saturn V, but they're all super reliable and most importantly, very cost effective. What's more impressive about the evolution of ISRO's launch vehicles is their adaptability. Take PSLV as an example. It has three versions. PSLV-CA, which stands for Core Alone, Standard PSLV, and PSLV-XL. Well, all of them focus on polar synchronous orbit, which is around 600 kilometers altitude. Customers can choose which variations of vehicles to use based on the size of the satellite. This is the beauty of a cost-effective launcher. Furthermore, because of its focus on cost-effectiveness, ISRO also has to come up with brilliant engineering solutions to the problems it faces. One famous example is its experimental mission to Mars. On top of being the only successful Mars mission on the first try, ISRO had to perform six orbit-raising maneuvers over three weeks before heading to Mars. 
because the vehicle does not have enough power like the Falcon Heavy to send satellites directly to Mars, it slowly raises the satellite's orbit before injecting it successfully to a heliocentric orbit to Mars. The engineering and the problem solving behind it is truly amazing. This I think captures the essence of ISRO's success. As the founding father of ISRO Vikram used to say, there are some who question the relevance of space activities in the developing nation. To us, there is no ambiguity of purpose. We do not have the fantasy of competing with the economically advanced nations in the exploration of the moon or the planets or manned space flight. But we are convinced that if we are to play a meaningful role nationally and in the community of nations, we must be second to none in the applications of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society. I think this is the key to understand what ISRO stands for and how it differs from other space agencies and companies. This is also why I said at the beginning, it is really hard to pigeonhole ISRO. It didn't have the fundings that NASA had, it didn't have the startup mindset and institution that SpaceX had, but none of this stopped ISRO from doing something extraordinary. This just come to show how important passion and dedication is for any organization. You know, talking about ISRO makes me really happy because it's clearly made out of people who are passionate, dedicated, and above all, an institution that encourages it. Looking forward into the future, I think ISRO will continue to do great things. It's setting out to perform its first manned mission in 2022. I'd say good luck to ISRO. Before I publish this video, one of my viewers sent me this picture. Can you believe it? In the early days, engineers of ISRO had to send rocket parts with their bicycles to assemble them for testing. This is the situation they had to deal with every single day. They don't have a lot of resources. What they do have is passion and dedication. They only achieved what they did through hard work and a lot of practice. A good way to practice actively though is through Brilliant.org. Even though rocketry is complex, all it takes is for you to start small in order to achieve great things. ISRO knows at the very beginning that if it were to build huge rockets like Saturn V, it won't work. It has to start with something manageable like the satellite launch vehicles in order to slowly become a giant it is now. In a similar way, Brilliant help you start small with interesting problems and examples so that you can master concepts by solving fun, challenging problems yourselves. On top of that, it also gives you a good framework to enhance your understanding of rocketry and help you link relevant physics topics together. If you love this video, I recommend you to start with the courses on classical mechanics and astronomy. To start small and achieve great things, go to brilliant.org slash Curious Elephant and sign up for free. First 200 people click on the link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. All right, that's about it. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me at Lay Creatives on Twitter and Instagram. As always, I'm Lay. I'll catch you guys later.